Thank you, Jim. Good morning, everybody. No a group like Alec would start at 8 o'clock for sure, so <laughs> it's good to see so many people already in their seats. Um, thank you, Senator Buck, for that great introduction. Uh, an excellent leader in Indiana uh, for years now. He's been a rock that so many of us, and, and, and many of us younger folks who came into public service after him are able to rely on. And um, something you might not know about the senator is that he started off life as a Democrat. It's true, Ooh, yeah, no, 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 no. But he quickly, he quickly uh, learned why he wasn't a Democrat. I think it was, he, you were a union member too, UAW, yeah. And, and in your, if you're in Kokomo, Indiana, over the last several decades, it was hard not to be one of those two things, or both of those two things. Uh, but it was the leadership of Senator Buck that has really not only turned, helped turn the state around, but turned that community around to where conservative values have a fighting chance and we're gaining ground every day. So Senator, thank you for your leadership in the state and in this community. Of course, I want to give a shout out to all my Indiana legislators. I saw Dave Frizzell earlier and I hear there's about 20 of us uh, here at this conference. Uh, second only to the, to the state of Texas, perhaps my second favorite state, but I only saw, I only saw David so far, which means the Indiana delegation had a late night last night, apparently. Um, look, I have, uh, not only as a congressman, but as a former Secretary of State, been following Alec, really, really appreciate what you do. Uh, there are a lot of us in Congress who appreciate what you're doing, what you're about. We also appreciate the members of the sponsors who support you. And we understand that there's a tim intimidation tactics going on. One I just heard of this morning, I think it'll be filled in on later. Please remember to support your members and your sponsors because we are all in this fight together for free markets, for federalism. <clears throat> for free ideas. Um, working with legislatures, uh, when you're in the executive branch like I was, working with the legislature is so important. And I learned that firsthand when I was Secretary of State. We, were, we did photo ID at the polls together. We were the first state in the nation to have a successfully uh, uh, implemented system that was tested at the Supreme Court, went all the way up there and back when we got a 6-3 decision. So if you're looking for any um, uh, information on photo ID and how to do it uh, in a in a constitutionally testable, uh, suitable way. Uh, please ask my office, ask Senator Buck, ask David Brazell. They were all in this together when we got it done almost a decade ago. Now, I'm here to quickly uh, talk about the Every Student Succeeds Act. It is a product that was um, put together uh, on the basis of an earlier bill that came out of my education and workforce committee along with uh, Congressman Chairman uh, John Klein. Our product was a lot more conservative, you might say. Uh, the Every Student Succeed Act is the bipartisan uh, solution that came out of the conference committee. It was actually signed by the president. However, even so, here's the takeaway. According to the Wall Street Journal editorial board, it was the most devolution, the most federalism they have seen out of any bill in 25 years. One little bill, haven't seen so much in 25 years. Here's the crux of it. No Child Left Behind, the core of No Child Left Behind, in my opinion, was what we called adequate yearly progress. It was that well-intentioned but impossible idea that we were gonna catch every child in the classroom up to grade level reading within one year. And it has done nothing, in my opinion, but cause stress among the kids, among the teachers, uh, all around. And after 13 years of trying to achieve it, it wasn't nearly achieved. So we got rid of it. We eliminated adequate yearly progress in the Every Student Succeeds Act. It is no longer the law of the land. But we did not eliminate accountability. Accountability is still very much there. The big difference is you, the state legislatures, get to decide what success looks like. Yes, you have to test. Yes, you have to test in certain subjects in grades three through eight and then once again in high school. 
but how long you test, the kind of tests you use, methodologies, everything else in your accountability system is up to you. You can decide what success looks like, and the Department of Education cannot judge it. You have to file a plan, but your, that plan is automatically made transparent to the voter and the taxpayer. It cannot be denied by the Department of Education, and it cannot be a basis for you to get your property back, i.e. tax dollars. We also um, do a lot of other things. We eliminated 49 federal government education programs. I started out in my bill with 79, and the compromise, so to speak, was 49. But we don't eliminate the funding. Funding actually increases sl slightly. We do take that money into a, basically a block grant, and we give it back to the states for you to spend on education. Can't be spent on roads, but anything you want in terms of education. We also get rid of the federally mandated teacher assessment. No longer, at, from, a, at, from a federal perspective, will teachers need to be tested or assessed. You may want to do that. You may want to come up with whatever methodology or whatever uh, procedure you want for testing your teachers, but it will no longer be a federal mandate. It's in your hands. We also get rid of the Common Core requirement at the federal level. <clears throat> Now, someone needs to tell Donald Trump this, but it is gone already uh, from the books at the federal level. And I understand it's, it's, it's too sexy of a political point not to make, but it is not there. No longer can the Department of Education uh, require Common Core or any national kind of national standard uh, as a prerequisite for you to get your property back. Uh, if you want Common Core in your state, that's up to you. Whatever standards you want are up to you. You need to have a set of standards is the only requirement. So again, I think tremendous movement in that regard. And I'll end up here with um, a little discussion about a pilot program that is way down in the weeds of the bill, but it, is, it demonstrates uh, some, some movement uh, on the issue of portability. Uh, we certainly do not have the votes to get vouchers done at the federal level at this point in time. It doesn't mean we don't keep fighting. For example, the District of Columbia Vouchers uh, Act is, is still uh, uh, the law, and we still use that as a basis uh, to, to promote portability and, and, and vouchers. However, we do create in, this, in, in the Every Student Succeeds Act a 50 school district per pupil funding pilot project. So 50 school districts in the United States can apply for a pilot program where you can take federal funding, add it to your state and local funding, and have that funding follow the student to the public school of their choice in a per pupil fashion. If it's a low income student or, or a, dis a disabled student, um, that, that will be the focus, but again, it's the idea that we're able to attach Title I federal funding to any student and have that follow them to the public school of their choice. 50 school districts in the nation can apply for this, and after three years, we negotiated in this law for the caps to come off. So that's uh, some good promise for us to continue to build on our goal of, 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 of true portability and ultimately uh, a voucher system. What did we have to trade for this? Well, actually not too much. And I use the term trade or trade off instead of compromise. And if there's one observation I could make, we ought to stop using the word compromise because it signifies that we're giving up our values. When really sometimes what we're doing when we're getting these deals done, we're trading something. Trading something significant we, we like for something we like. I mean, that's, that's a difference. So what we traded for all the things I just mentioned was um, a formalization of pre-kindergarten. So it's been going on in an ad hoc fashion now for several years through the appropriations process. We formalized it in the authorization process. It's something uh, that <clears throat> many liberals like, uh, early childhood uh, intervention. 
uh, some of us conservatives might call it uh, too early of an age for institutionalization or, 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 or so forth, but we are seeing some good data come out of that. Um, so however you feel about it, the president was able to sign the bill because he got uh, some of that early childhood uh, funding uh, formalized in this law, and it's going to uh, continue moving forward. But other than that, I think it, this, this Every Student Succeeds Act was a tremendous win for conservative principles for federalism, for the idea that education is your bailiwick, not the federal government's. We weren't able to uh, eliminate the Department of Education. I didn't have the votes for that, even though I filed that bill too. <laughs> but we did really, really reduce the footprint and the authority of that department and took a good deal of its funding authority and moved it back to you again where it belongs. Thanks for letting me partner with you. We really appreciate it. Good to see you.